Uh, the real life story of Macaulay Culkin. That name's so weird. I can't be the I can't be the only one who thinks that like that's a weird name, right? Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. Like that's just. All right, let's 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 not stop fucking wasting time and just get into this one. Man. For over 30 years, Home Alone has been a Christmas classic for Americans. A lot of people Macaulay Culkin, it. who plays the role of Kevin has entertained generations of families, Kevin! always keeping the Christmas spirit alive. However, despite the massive success at such a young age, Macaulay never wanted this life. Being an actor was his father's dream that he forced upon his seven children. Macaulay just ended up being the most successful. Before age 13, he was fed up and wanted away from the spotlight. This was the catalyst that led to one of the most tragic downfalls Hollywood has seen in regards to child stars. Drugs, arrests, okay, public ridicule, a strange relationship there, with bro. Michael Jackson. This I'm is the story. <laughs> oh my god, it's already wild. We're 45 seconds of Macaulay in. Macaulay Culkin, the life he never wanted. Macaulay's parents, Kit and Patricia, had seven children. Shane, Dakota, Macaulay, Kieran, Quinn, Christian, and Rory. The Colkins had a rough upbringing, Damn. to say the least. They lived Seven in a railroad kids? apartment in a tenement on East 94th Street and 2nd Avenue in New York City. The home was barely suitable for a couple. It was just a hallway with no separating doors except for the bathroom, which didn't even have a lock. It was not an ideal environment Damn. for children, but they kept having more babies. Macaulay, who also goes by Mac, began acting at age four appearing in roles on stage, on television, and in films throughout the 80s. He landed some pretty big hits, like Rocket Gibraltar and Uncle Buck, but Mac didn't exactly land those roles because of an inherent passion for acting. His father's dream was for his children to star in films, because he was a dancer slash actor whose career was cut short. The peak of Kit Culkin's career was being an Damn, so he wanted to live through his kids. Extra on the Broadway play West Side Story in 1961 he was an and another extra? small role in Hamlet in 1964. He had never experienced any sort of true fame or main character spotlight that he so longed for. His career was cut short over a small incident that he could not get past. So, doing King Lear yeah. off, off, off Broadway. Right. He's playing Gloucester. Way off, way off Broadway. <laughs> He's playing Gloucester and Gloucester gets his eyes poked out. Yeah. So, he is so into his part, he yeah. closes his eyes. And so he's doing the soliloquy, and he's getting closer and closer to the edge of the stage. Yeah. And they no he doesn't notice because he's so into the part because right. he's blind. And, yeah. and then he spills into the first row. Yeah. And hurts himself. This is opening night. Yeah. <laughs> and injures himself and can't do the rest of the run of the whole of the whole show. Uh -huh. And apparently that was like the last acting gig he ever did because it was quite embarrassing. Since Kit could not deal with the shame and embarrassment. He pushed his dream onto his children, starting with his firstborn son, Shane. Shane was supposed to be the actor slash dancer that his father never was. So they just kind of brought Macaulay along with wait. them to ballet classes. Wait, 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 wait. So the dad was at a play. He was doing a play. And he was playing as a blind man. Or acting as a blind man, rather. And he was like walking towards the front of the stage and he fell off the stage and at that moment he's like it's too embarrassing to do anything ever again like really that's really bro nobody probably even knew who you were not one person knew who you were And hurts himself. This is opening night. Yeah. <laughs> and injures himself and can't do the rest of the run of the whole of the whole show. Uh -huh. And apparently that was like the last acting gig he ever did. I think probably what happened is that he fell off and fucked up the play. And the director saw it, right? And was like, You fuck you fucked it. You fucked it. And then the director kicked him off. I think that's probably It was more quite closer to what happened. Since Kit could not deal with the shame. The embarrassment. Oh, the shame. Shame and embarrassment. He pushed his dream oh, onto his fuck? children, starting with his firstborn son, Shane. Shane was supposed to be the actor slash dancer that okay. his father never was. So they just kind of brought Macaulay along with them to ballet classes, 
theater and movie auditions. Max says that he was an afterthought. His brother Kieran also felt the same way. My parents were running a little theater, the Light Opera of Manhattan, and whenever a production needed a kid, they were like, what age and what gender? We've got seven of them right over here. Kieran felt that they were often Damn. used as onstage props. But to his father's surprise, Macaulay was a superior gender? dancer, Jesus and Christ. producers were much more interested in him than Shane. He was daring, and if, if, if you can say a six-year-old is daring, he just wasn't afraid to do anything. I mean, he'd do whatever you asked and more. Which led him to getting booked for almost every role he auditioned for. Once he landed Uncle Buck, which generated $67 million Buck? in the box office, the family's finances began to rely on what Mac was earning. Although Kit didn't <coughs> see what everyone else saw in Macaulay, he knew Mac was his ticket to Hollywood, leading them to a role that was about to change their family's life forever. After a hectic start to a family trip to Europe, writer and producer John Hughes conceptualized the idea of Home Alone. While preparing for vacation, he wrote down a list of everything he didn't want to forget and jokingly added his children to that list. At that moment, he thought, what if I left my 10-year-old son at home? What would he do? One what if led to another, and while taking a break from packing, nice. Hughes wrote idea. eight pages of notes that later developed into the screenplay of Home Alone. Since he previously worked on Uncle Buck with Macaulay, Hughes wrote the Home Alone script specifically for him to play the role as Kevin McAllister. Damn, Macaulay's blockbuster film, Home Alone, was released in November 19... Bro, tell me how, like, they cap... Like, this could be the a thumbnail, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got a... They, they already got YouTube thumbnails down to a T in this fucking movie. Look at that. Big wide face with a, with a reaction and then an easy word to read. Like, come on, bro. They got it down. They could have uploaded this on, on YouTube. It went mega viral, son. <laughs> play of Home Alone. Since he previously worked on Uncle Buck with Macaulay, Hughes wrote the Home Alone script specifically for him to play the role as Kevin McAllister. Macaulay's blockbuster film, Home Alone, was released in November 1990 and became the third highest 1990 grossing Damn. film of all time worldwide behind E.T. and became wait Macaul hold up we gotta go Hughes back wrote the home alone script specifically for him <laughs> to play the role as kevin McAllister. macaulay's blockbuster film home alone was released in november 1990 and became the third highest grossing film of all time worldwide behind E.T. and the Star Wars films. Jesus. It earned nearly $500 million in worldwide box office. Its huge success even gave rise to a Hollywood phrase. To be home alone meant having your own movie's box office dwarfed by another wildly popular film. Macaulay basically became an A-list celebrity overnight. I mean, this is it, pal. You are a bona fide star as of right now. The number one box office movie of the weekend. Nice to have you on the show. Okay. In that first interview, it kind of seems like he isn't really phased about the success of the film. And although he could be nervous, he probably didn't care because this was all just a basic routine for him. Did you have any say in whether or not you worked when you were young? Uh, not really. No. Yeah. Like it was after a while, it became like I said, a job, and it was I like I never chose the projects. They were like my parents, right. like, you know, essentially like chose them for me. So they so were it was like, kind of good show. news, Macaulay. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They called You're me gonna Macaulay. You're going to buy us yeah. a new house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, and like I never read any of the scripts. Like wow. I would, I would just read like the lines for like the next day or whatever. Like I would like get the gist of what the movie was about, and, but then I just kind of show up and hit my marks, find my light. You know, uh, you know, and, and, and recite my lines. You know, so surreal. Wow. It's kind of just like again, like it's what you do, right? Like it's like in the same way that like yeah, like kids go to like school or something like that. Like you know, you you, you fall into a routine. Yeah, he didn't know anything else. To be fair, like he that that's all he knew. So that's all he's gonna do. You know, what I'm like saying? in the same way that like yeah, Wild. like kids go to like school or something like that. Like you know, you, you you fall into a routine to a certain extent. No choice in whether or not he was allowed to act no choice in what roles he could play. Barely was even prompted about his roles. Macaulay was essentially just being told what to do and moving like a robot. This is where the tension between Macaulay and his father worsened. The Colkin family was not yet rich. Mac was only paid $100,000 for Home Alone, so his father knew- What? Wait, they got like a set salary? It's not like percentages? Dude, that's a fucking scam, son. No way. He got a set salary. That's fucking insane, bro. Holy shit. Yeah, that face, this face right here is exactly, this is this is my face to that. Like, what the fuck? Set salary, son? He said you get a hundred grand. Well, and moving like a robot. This is where the tension between Fucking a million. It grossed 500 million. 
Kali and his father Dude. worsened. The Colkin family what was not hell? yet rich. Mac was only paid $100,000 for home alone, so his father knew he needed to capitalize on the momentum for them to make some huge money. He immediately negotiated his next film, My Girl, in which Macaulay got paid $1.5 million. At the time, child labor Something laws higher. allowed the child to work for 10 hours per day, but a parent or legal guardian needed to supervise them for the entire time. This essentially takes Kit out of the workforce, giving him no choice but to take a cut of Mac's income. Plus, they had to travel outside of New York for films. Macaulay says that although he spent a lot of time with his father, they were never close. You, you disliked him all through it. Yeah, and he disliked me too. Like, we didn't like each other. Really? Yeah, but then all of a sudden, imagine this, now this man uh, who you dislike kind of thing, and he dislikes you. Uh, now I become the sole, like, uh, focus of him when I start earning. So now all of a sudden I'm like, you know, going around the country, like, locked in a room with a guy who doesn't like me, kind of thing. But at the same yeah. time, yeah, it's... You know, how does that... Why, how, why? I was kind of even, like, relatively jealous, you know? I well, think, sure. Oh, he was jealous. I think so. I, 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 everything that he tried to do in his life, like, I excelled at, like, before, was, before I was 10 years old. He was a bad man. Like, honestly, he was a bad man. He was abusive and, like, yeah, like, physically and mentally. Like, yeah. As if it couldn't get any Jesus. worse. He also had to deal with the repercussions of fame. There would be times when Macaulay walked down the street only to be crowded by hordes of people. One time I wore a ski mask and goes, I was walking down the street, you know, this guy goes, you know, I heard him just whispering, is that the kid from Wawa? I'm like, I'm wearing a ski mask, boy. No, I better get my plans. I better get a facelift or something. Boy. One time, Mac pulled a hat low over his forehead in an attempt to look anonymous. A woman walked up, grabbed the cap off his head, peered at him, and said, yeah, it's him. And then, you're not that cute. Mac couldn't hide from the world. <laughs> Bro, Everyone thought what? he should be so happy because of this success. But none of his siblings could truly understand that what he felt. Weirdo. But there was one person that could relate Let's to McCall. Her. And that man was Michael Jackson. Like Kit Culkin. Michael's father, Joe Jackson, initiated yeah. a plan to get his family out of poverty and into superstardom. Yeah. Joe trained his children to dance and sing. If they made a mistake during rehearsals, he would beat them with the buckle end of a belt, an electrical cord, or a tree branch. More specifically, their father targeted Michael, maliciously teasing his appearance and breaking down his self-confidence. Macaulay and Michael lived a childhood where their fathers despised them, despite needing them to provide for their family financially. Michael was quite literally the only person Mac could relate to. But there was one obviously weird thing about this relationship. Michael was 33 years old, and Macaulay was 10. Over the years, Michael had befriended multiple children, inviting them and their families to his infamous Neverland Ranch, a full-blown amusement park at his estate. He hung out with these children and occasionally had sleepovers. Colkin's parents were fine with the friendship. Macaulay and Kieran visited Neverland Ranch it's often. Weird, Macaulay even says that he slept in Michael's bed about 10 times. And what happened at the house? That's what all these things it's, are you know, that's, that's, that's so weird. weird. You know, did that? Nothing happened, you know? I mean, nothing, really. I mean, we played video games, you know? We, we you know, played Sleep it in some amusement bed. park. Well, the thing is, the thing is with that whole thing is that, you know, they go, oh, you slept in the same bedroom as him. It's like, I don't think you understand. Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories. <laughs> it has, like, like, three bathrooms and this and that. So when I slept in his bedroom, yeah, but you have to understand the whole scenario. And the thing is with Michael. Through all the ups and downs in Michael's life, Mac was there for him. Mac never publicly bashed him. He only has positive memories of the star. In 2005, he testified under oath that all accusations of sexual misconduct were absolutely ridiculous and untrue. Home Alone 2 Lost in New York was the 1992 sequel to Home Alone that was another smash hit. Yeah, Mac was paid $4 million banger. for the film, and it earned more than $359 million. And he only got $4 million? Where the fuck is, like... I don't understand that at all, personally. How do you only get four mil when it grosses that much? That's that's so wild. I hope actors nowadays are, are negotiating percentages rather than set amounts. Mac was paid $4 million for the film, and it earned more than $359 million in the box office. Jesus, it was bro. met with some criticism initially for having basically the same exact plot as the first one with some minor tweaks. But over the years, this film has become the most iconic and beloved of the series. The monstrous success leveled up the Colkins immense- Bro, set amount- like, why? Why, Hawk? Why? They pro- I understand they probably have no choice, but like- I don't know, that's just, I, like, 
how are you getting that set? I don't know. That's just Macaulay was mind. officially the most successful and highest paid child in Hollywood since Shirley Temple. And still to this day, I don't think there's a more iconic child star than Macaulay Culkin. His father, Kit, gained substantial influence in Hollywood because for studio executives to reach Macaulay, they needed to go through Kit. In 1993, Premier Magazine rated Kit Culkin the 48th most powerful person in Hollywood, ahead of Michael Douglas and Eddie Murphy. Studio executives Damn. complained that Kit tried to use his power to seize creative control of Macaulay's movies. Because of this controlling nature, Kit was making enemies quickly. Little did they know that Macaulay Culkin's career at age 12 just peaked, and it was all downhill from here. Damn. The Good Son was a thriller where Mac plays the role of Henry, a psychopathic child who kills people. The film did $60 million in the worldwide box office, which seems- Bro. What? Seems like a massive step down since Home Alone, but considering a totally different movie genre and not based on Christmas, I would say it's still good numbers. Mac was still beloved for his acting, and most of the negative reception was based on the plot. By 1993, Macaulay was just tired and desperately told his father he needed a break. He just wanted to go to school. He said, yeah, sure. And the next thing I knew, I was on the next set doing the next thing. And it just kind of clicked in my brain. Okay, there's basically nothing I can do to make this stop. I was yeah, making man. God knows how much money and Kit was making me sleep on the couch just because he could, just to let you know who's in charge and just to let you know if he doesn't want you to sleep in a bed, you're not going to sleep in a bed. The Nutcracker, Getting Even With Dad, The Page Master, Richie Rich, these next four movies all released in 1994, and evidently, the world was sick of Macaulay Culkin. He was cashing in an $8 million salary for each film, which Damn. is equivalent to about $16.5 million in 2023 value. Damn, Richie Rich was son. the only decently successful movie at a $75 million worldwide box office, and that's because it's basically the same format as Home Alone. It became increasingly clear that Macaulay failed to find substantial success outside of Home Alone. Uh, I, and then, you know, my father and my mother finally, you know, called it quits, which was one of the best things that ever happened. Uh, um, I was able to actually, like, walk away from the business. I even wanted to take a break for a while, and eventually, like, like I just was like, I'm done. I'm done, guys. Like, I, you know, I, I, uh, I hope you all made your money because there's no more coming from me. And it's, you know. Really? Yeah. So now, but, like, I guess. I quit for, like, eight years. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, this was the greatest thing that happened to Mac but it was the straw that broke the camel's back in his parents' marriage. They were gearing up for a divorce and a very public battle for custody over him. He did not want to go with his father, but his mother was spending all of her money on lawyers trying to fight him. So the only way Mac could get access to his money was to legally take both of his parents' names off of his trust fund. He found an executor to what? protect and look over his finances and was able to secure his multi-million dollar fortune. Kit never showed up for the last day of the trial. He stole all of Mac's memorabilia and he hasn't seen him since the mid 90s. It was never what? about money for Kit, it was about control. Once he lost control, he disappeared and he brought the ship down with him. New York Magazine noted that his rapid ascent seemed less adorable and precocious the more people learned about his home life. Plus, everyone in Hollywood has a bad experience working with Kit. The result of this was that Macaulay didn't do Damn, any man. film roles for 10 years. So he did what all normal kids do, no way, went, went to, to high school. school, but he did it for purely social reasons. He also got married at age 17 to Rachel Minor. He, he relished in the New York City counterculture dog? lifestyle. He dyed his hair pink, smoked, drank, vandalized walls and parking meters. He was trying to live the polar opposite experience of his childhood, and he had the money to treat everything like a hobby. The media watched his every move and criticized him. He was one of the early targets of the tabloid sensationalized the media Jesus drama Christ, that famously targeted bro. Britney Spears. They're just the gonna tabloid throw, like, see, that, like, that's insane, bro, that they just throw that on the fucking front page of whatever stupid fucking magazine this is. Like, that's six months to live, really? Like, Jesus Christ, this fucking shit is wild, son. With sensationalized media drama that Fuck famously that targeted magazine. Britney whatever Spears, magazine that Lindsay was, Lohan, and yeah, Paris Hilton. Go, it was so blown right out of off. proportion, Colkin says. I never did anything more than any upper class, upper west side kid you know would. We weren't like all squatting in the corner shooting heroin. That quote was from 2001. A 21 year old Macaulay Culkin thought he already made it through the toughest times in his life. And he didn't realize his darkest days were yet to come.
in 2003, the 23-year-old decided it was time to return to the spotlight. Likely seeking a more mature image, he appeared in the biographical drama Party Monster, which is rated MA15+. Mac only had one Party opportunity Monster, to make huh? a grand return. Sadly, that movie looked fucking terrible. Just saying, like, that's not the movie you want to make your return on, bro. He blew it. Critics tore the film apart, with Party Monster really? receiving an awful 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, while yeah, struggling cool. to earn over $1 million on a $5 million budget. The public wasn't looking for him anymore. Macaulay found himself in a complicated situation. He was too old to appeal to a younger audience, and the audience he garnered during his childhood had outgrown him. Desperate to bounce back from the disappointment, Macaulay booked a supporting role in the comedy film Saved. The controversial film was a moderate success. More importantly, Macaulay's performance received positive reviews, but just when he got a little bit of positive press, he was arrested for drug possession. Macaulay and a friend were pulled over for speeding on I-44 in Oklahoma City. The police found 17 grams of marijuana, 8 Xanax pills, and 16 Klonopin, none of which were prescribed to him. At the time, Damn. people jumped to conclusions, labeling 17 grams of weed is like basically nothing. I probably got more of that right here, but fucking fucking Xanax and Clonazepam, whatever the fuck that is, bro, if you got pills on you, you're definitely fucking up, son. Like, the weed is, you can get by with the weed, but the fucking, the pills, son? Oh, hell no. Pin. None of Actually, which. depending on where he's at, too, because weed could be like, Depending on what state he's at, we could be majorly illegal there. ...were prescribed to him. At the time, people jumped to conclusions, <clears throat> labeling Colkin as another child star gone wrong. Damn. However, Mac believed the arrest was totally blown out of proportion, suggesting, I'm supposed to be a lot more effed up than I am. I took a certain amount of pride that I wasn't that cliche, so it was like, oh great, I gave a lot of people exactly what they wanted. You know, everything that I do, for some reason, becomes this big crazy thing, you know, even though any normal person does it. Like, yeah, I'm a kid, I had a beer. You know, I smoked a joint. Big deal. You know what I'm saying? And it's not something I make a thing out of or anything like that. Mac didn't think he had a problem. He didn't think it could get worse. But it did. Macaulay but got divorced from his wife in 2002 and began yeah. a relationship with Mila Kunis. They kept their personal lives very private. They both grew up as child stars and leaned on each other for emotional support. They didn't do press together and only rarely were photographed together, considering they dated for seven years. After multiple failed attempts at coming back to the spotlight in early 2000s, he just stopped trying. Allegedly, Macaulay attempted to propose to Mila multiple times, in which she always said no. Then Damn, in 2008, he got him? floored with some tragic news. Macaulay Culkin's older sister Dakota was killed while walking home from Brennan's bar in West Los Angeles. She was struck by a vehicle. The driver immediately tried to render aid. She was taken to the UCLA hospital with massive head trauma and passed away on December 10th. There aren't very many pictures of Dakota since she stayed out of the spotlight. This was devastating news for the family. But to make it worse, him and Mila broke up. I had a horrible breakup. Damn, that's I, sad. I had a, it a horrible, horrible, horrible breakup. And I was Horrible like, in that it made, you were very sad over it? No, I fucked up. Like, oh, I was an asshole okay. in my 20s. Oh, okay. And I'll be the okay. first to admit it. And that's okay. kind of something that took me a long time to come out and be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I was a dick and yeah. I accept it and I own it now. Yeah. And it's fucked up what I did. It's fucked up what I did and fucked up how I did it. Mila kind of hints here that she may have cheated on Macaulay, or at least left him at his most vulnerable time after seven years. After this, all of Mac's public photos were very concerning. He looked extremely skinny, unhealthy, and potentially using drugs. Extremely bold articles were published, stating that yeah, he was like addicted that, to heroin wild. and had only six months to live. They yeah, did not have any evidence to back up these claims, wild. only that he had been arrested for drugs in the past. Plus, many years later, he said, I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't had drugs in my life at some point or another. Macaulay does admit this was the darkest time of his life. He couldn't eat all the foods he used to love eating. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't find any purpose in waking up in the morning. Then he got hit with another devastating blow when his lifelong friend Michael Jackson sadly passed away in 2009. The darkness loomed over his head for many years. Oh, he's we're only at 2009. That's wild. Passed away in 2009. The darkness loomed over his head for many years. He still just wanted to be left alone, but the media took any chance they could to post something about the child star who's cursed. He started a comedy musical group called Pizza Underground, where he did pizza-themed covers of songs. Wait, what? Nothing screams, leave me alone and I don't care, than putting a pizza on your face and playing a toy trumpet. In 2013, 
stop. He didn't do that. You didn't do that. Please. Why are you looking at me, bruh? What? You want to have a fucking staring contest? Yeah, look away. That's what I thought. Fucking cats just staring at me like a weirdo. Bro, there's no way he put he did that pizza thing, right? I don't even want to go back and see that again because I don't... There, I'm. Just, he didn't do that. Stop. Let's stop fucking around here. He didn't He didn't do that, all right? Just he abruptly moved to Paris. I thought nobody recognized me. Yeah. And it, what it was was, no, we recognize you. We just don't care. Oh, yeah. That's like, better. Is where, that better? Have you, where have you people been my whole life? <laughs> kind of thing. Mac was desperate to find some normalcy in his life, and he found it in France. He stayed there for four years, away from the cameras, away from the rumors, there just walking around Paris with a baguette under his arm and blended in with everybody else. During his four-year stint over there, his father said he doesn't even consider Macaulay his son anymore. And while that does seem like a very bold statement from his father, I'm sure Macaulay feels the same way. Yeah, the thing really that prompted his true. move back to the United States was meeting his now wife, Brenda Song. While on the set of Changeland in 2018, Macaulay met and began dating Brenda, best known for her appearance as London Tipton on The Sweet Dude, Life I of Zack and Cody. Dude, I thought she looked familiar, but I was like, like... My head was spinning, but I didn't. I, I was like, who the fuck is that? It's the bitch from fucking Sweet Life as I Can Go To. Bonding over being child it's stars, far. Mac thought it was too good to be true. He thought she would up and leave like other women in his life. But the couple would later get engaged and seemed happy. Oh, damn. I, I thought he was going to be like, and. He was right. Happier than ever. They've been together ever since. Nice. Macaulay was so w. traumatized by his youth. He never thought he would have children of his own. But in 2021, Brenda gave birth to their son, Dakota, who they named after Macaulay's sister. His relationship with Brenda brought some new life into him. He started nice. multiple creative projects since meeting her. A comedy podcast called Bunny Ears, multiple television roles, and voiceover parts. He even had a big acting return in 2021 for the 10th season of American Horror Story in which viewers praised his performance. His character, Mickey, quickly became a fan favorite. He remains relatively him? active on social media and has I mean, done a lot of public- I didn't watch it, but that didn't look like him at all. Wow. ...interviews and podcasts since meeting her. It seems like his wife and new family gave hope to the now 42-year-old. His father is in poor health, but Macaulay refuses to let his child meet his grandfather. But with the abusive past, it's hard to blame Mac for this. Despite everything that's happened and constantly going in and out of her- Wow, man. Uh, we'll the video Mac finish. is grateful for the way his life went. Although he endured years of abuse, unfair public scrutiny, potential drug habits, and peaked at age 12, he is still grateful for the opportunities and money that came along with it. This life, he didn't choose for himself. He was born to achieve his father's dream. Dude. By the time he was 10, he had achieved everything his father never could. And since then, he's been living life on his own terms. Fuck yeah, that is a W ending, dude. Hell yeah, fire, yo. Hey, make sure to go subscribe to Patrick CC, too, yeah?